guys and welcome back to coffee with my sunshine and if you're new here welcome so I'm so glad you guys decided to stop in today because today is the day of my challenge and that is the using trash to create treasure challenge and each month I have a different co-host and this month for the month of October it is April from the channel April Adair shares and she does some fabulous DIYs if you like my channel you will love hers she does a ton of Dollar Tree DIYs. She does anything from trash to treasure, thrift to treasure. She also has a gorgeous garden that she tends to in the summer. And I absolutely love her. She is such a sweetheart and she is such an inspiration to me as well as many others. So like I said, head on over to her channel when you're done with mine. Also, when you're done with our channels, click on the playlist so that you can get tons more trash to treasure inspiration. So for this challenge, all you have to do basically is it's very simple. You have to take something that you would normally throw away or recycle or something somebody else would have thrown away or recycled and turn it into something functional, a home decor piece, anything that you can come up with that is recycling an item or reusing or upcycling and keeping it out of the landfills. So I'm so excited to see what everybody has created. And if you'd like to see how I used these items that we were gonna throw in the trash to create a super functional and organized craft room, please keep watching. So to start off, I am using this container that we get our deli meat in from Costco and a pool noodle. You can get these pool noodles usually at Dollar Tree or Michael's or something. I don't know about in the winter, but you can find them there in the summer. But all I'm going to do is cut a slit in the pool noodle, just a small slit the size of the container. And then I'm going to cut that chunk off, slide it onto the side of the Tupperware container and cut slits in it. And here I'm just cutting them deeper into the container because this is where I'm going to be putting my paintbrushes. And you would fill that with water so that, you know, when you're doing different crafts, you can dunk it in water, rinse it out, and then just let it drip dry. Then for my next project, I'm going to be using this coconut. And I will quickly show you how we opened this up. We had never done it before, but it was pretty simple. You just poke holes into those eyes of the coconut with a screwdriver and then you kind of just like, I don't know, dig out the little holes there with the screwdriver and then pour out the coconut water. And then here my husband is just taking a hammer and cracking it around the line on the coconut just to get it to cut in half. And then he is taking the meat of the coconut out and then I'm going to take the empty shell and with just some regular sandpaper give it a good sanding on the inside which this was super simple just to get get the rough edges um, sanded down because I'm going to paint them so for the first one I'm just going to be painting it white and this is just regular acrylic paint I use the Arteza paints usually and for mine, I just needed one coat. It coated really, really well, and I think it's super cute. I'm going to be using these on my desk in my craft room. And I'm painting the other one, this really pretty blue or teal color. This is also going to go on my desk in my craft room, and I will show you what I did with everything at the end. And for my next trash piece, we had this giant pegboard in our basement and my husband cut it down for me because I just needed a small piece and I went ahead and just coated the back with, um, I used ceiling paint just because that's what I had in white in a large amount, <laughs> but you can use anything. And then I, um, because this side was so dirty, I went ahead and wiped it down and now I'm just giving it a fresh coat of white paint. And we were, we're going to be throwing um, the rest of the pegboard away because um, it's really curved. It's been sitting in our basement forever. 
Next, I'm going to be taking this plastic container that usually has mixed nuts in it, and I'm going to cover it with this burlap. And I want it to be kind of messy, so I left the burlap piece pretty big. It was just a scrap piece that we had. And I'm just hot gluing it around, around the whole jar and hot gluing it at the top. And I'm leaving some excess at the top because I think that looks really cute and rustic. So like I said, it's kind of sloppy, but that's the look I'm going for. And then I'm taking some um, black string or rope and just tying it around the top and then cutting some of the excess off of the top because it was just a little much. And then I'm going to be adding some greenery. Like I said, I'll be showing you all of everything that I do at the end and how it turned out. So next I am using these plastic containers, these spices that are outdated, and I'm just going to give them a good cleaning and take the labels off, which I use um, this. If I can't get the labels off by soaking it um, in hot soapy water, I will take this um, Goo Gone it works really, really well to remove any residue that's left from the stickers. And then because I didn't really like the look of that green lid for what I'm doing, I am taking this black lid from a similar jar and just trading the lids. Because I wasn't sure if painting the lid would hold up. Then for this tin can, I'm going to be painting it with chalkboard paint and it's going on kind of thin because I had to water it down because it's actually been in my garage and it was somewhat frozen because it's been really, really cold here. So this I am showing you how I hung the pegboard and I didn't realize, my husband and I just were thinking we could just hang the pegboard and weren't really thinking about actually using the, the hooks. <laughs> to hold the things onto the pegboard. So anyway, I'm showing you how not to do it at first, and then I will show you shortly what we did to fix my mistake on the pegboard. So we're taking the little cubby that I showed you in the beginning, and we're actually hanging it sideways. And as you can see on the pegboard below, um, we added the spacer between the pegboard and the wall so that when we use the hooks, <laughs> they actually work. And then to hide the gapping from the spacers, we just put a frame around the pegboard and all we did was use some scrap wood for underneath the pegboard. So this is that burlap container that I covered with the greenery. I think it's so pretty. And these are the spice containers that I repurposed for my beads. And then I am using this blessed sign that I made last year. I can link the video if you're interested. I just thought it looked really pretty up there. And then for this cubby, I am using it to um, organize and store all my paints so that they're super easy to find. And so I can just take a quick look to see what colors I need, you know, if I'm out at the craft store or whatever. But I think it looks really cool and it's super functional and organized. This little cubby shelf was one that was in my daughter's room when she was really, really young and she was getting rid of it. So I thought we could repurpose it. I didn't do a lot to change it because there's actually some writing on the back that her and her friend did and I thought it was so cute. Um, I didn't show it but I didn't want to cover that kind of stuff up. And here are those coconut shells. I'm just using one to store my um, pins in, my safety pins. So I think it's functional and super cute at the same time. And for the other one, for right now, I'm just using this fake um, succulent and I'm just going to put it in there. 
just to add a little bit of color and I think it's really cute. And this um, box was actually my grandma's, so I thought it would just look really cute on the shelf that I got. I got it from Goodwill, it was 99 cents. And I'm just going to be hanging it on the pegboard with um, some of the hooks that come with the pegboard. And this is that can that I covered in chalkboard paint and then I took a chalk pen and just wrote pens and pencils. And then I'm using this um, galvanized bucket that I got from Walmart not too long ago. I used it in a DIY um, for the fall. I can list that if you're interested as well. And I'm just going to be using it to hold my paintbrushes. And I really like how everything turned out. It's going to keep me so much more organized and I think it's pretty. Oh, these are those pegboard hooks that I was talking about. It actually needs space to go into the holes in the pegboard and hook onto the back. That's why we needed those spacers between the pegboard and the wall. And for the pegboard, I for right now, I just hung some of my paintbrushes and some of my tools. I'm sure this thing will get filled up quickly. And then I used one of my glass jars that I tried to sell in the garage sale that nobody bought. And I'm just repurposing it for my um, strings and thread and stuff. And here's an up close look at one of those jars. And then this old paint bucket I'm just using for some of my scrap fabric. And I have a another desk in my craft room that I'm going to be putting this on. So here is the finished look. I just love it. I love that everything that I used was um, from trash or recycled items. It just makes it that much more special. So like I said, when you're done watching my video, head on over to April's channel and check her out. Tell her I sent you and show her some love. Also in the description box, the playlist will be listed so that you can click on that and just binge watch a whole bunch of trash to treasure inspiration. I think this is cute. I left this little sticker that my daughter had put on there when she was little. I just couldn't take it off. So let me know in the comments below if you guys are still liking this challenge because I am loving doing it. I really think it's important that we get the word out and let people know how simple it is to recreate things or repurpose things, recycle things into really awesome treasures. and. I think it's so important that we keep more things out of the landfill if possible. Also, I wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate all your love and support and all the sweet comments that I get in the comment section. And please, if you don't get a response from me, I, I do read all of the comments, but sometimes I just don't have time to keep, keep up with um, replying back, but I try to, and sometimes they're really, really delayed, and I apologize for that, but do know that I love you guys and really appreciate all of you. So I hope to see you guys next time. Bye!